Dinner for Shoes, please. Hi, welcome to Dinner for Shoes and happy holidays. Um, you will see that I am joined by some more furry friends than usual. Kit is in her standard position in the cat hammock, but I've got these furry friends behind me. And they're gonna they're gonna have a role in today's Dinner for Shoes episode. Um, we are definitely gonna interview them about what they're wearing. I know everyone's dying to know. Um, and especially the hula hoop. Who wears a hula hoop, really? Um, but we are going to talk about holiday fashion. We're going to talk about what you wear for the holidays. I'm going to give you some ideas. I'm going to show you some of my favorite outfits in recent history that I've scrolled past that I was like, I'm going to wear that for a holiday party in case you have any holiday parties to go to. Um, and we're going to play a really fun game with hot cocoa. I've never been so excited to try hot cocoa. Um, I don't know how everyone feels about like the Starbucks white hot chocolate or whatever it is. And I don't even know what's the difference between hot cocoa and hot chocolate. Actually, that is a very good question. Alexa, what's the difference between hot cocoa and hot chocolate? Hot cocoa is made with cocoa powder, sweetener and sometimes milk, while hot chocolate is made with melted chocolate and milk for a richer taste. Well, I literally had no fucking idea that that was the case. I, I, I kid you not, like, I, I didn't know that. I think that normally I guess I have hot choc hot cocoa then because I feel like normally I have like the Swiss Miss packs and like I'll pour the, the, the powder in. So yeah, that makes more sense. Who actually melts their chocolate? Although where I went to get the hot cocoa today, which I'll give it away now, it's Starbucks, Dunkin', and Hidden Grounds, which is a local coffee shop. They all call it hot chocolate. So what I'm assuming is that they melted their chocolate in order to make this hot chocolate. And that just, that explains why at Hidden Grounds it was it cost me 480, which we're gonna get into the pricing, but we're gonna, once I decide which my favorite hot cocoa, hot chocolate is without looking at where it's from, and you'll see how I'm going to do that and how I'm going to test myself, we will then talk about the pricing of each. And if I had to guess now, I would say that I'm going to like the most expensive one because I always end up liking the most expensive option to everyone's dismay, especially mine. Um, luckily, the cats were not that expensive because I rescued them, but yeah. So let's talk about my outfit, first of all. Um, I did try a red lip today. This is why I hate lipstick, because immediately, if someone, if anyone can help me out and let me know how to make it so that once you put the lipstick on, you aren't, like, it's not, like, crumbling off your lips, let me know. Um, I have this Lancome color that I love, and it's, like, my go-to red holiday color. Literally wear it once a year. I have probably had it for, like, 42 years. Just kidding. I'm not that old. I probably have had it for like since maybe middle school, early high school. So, and I wear it like once a year for like one holiday party. So that's how old that lipstick, maybe that's why it's crumbling. Maybe that's why it's crumbling. All right. So I just solved my own problem. Get new lipstick. Fine. But I did do that today. I did do lipstick. Holiday cheer for all of you. And I also did my, I did like a little blue silver eyeshadow situation and um, I also did some, I guess we're doing face first. So I guess we're talking about the outfit and then we'll talk about the shoe. Um, earring wise, I have this like little cluster of uh, crystals and they scream Christmas tree to me. So I like to wear this during the holidays. Again, I probably wear it on the exact same day that I wear this Lancome lipstick like every year and it's the only time I wear it. But I only have one of these earrings so I mix and match and I go for like a silver ball stud and a pearl on the other side. It seems to complete the festive holiday look for me and with this outfit, I felt like I really didn't want a lot of jewelry. I wanted to let like the feathers speak for themselves. So I, anyway, that that's face. Okay jumpsuit jumpsuit is by miss circle i love miss circle i think that they have great holiday festive items um i will say that there are yes there are other sites that make pieces like miss circle but i do feel like the quality is really good i i've i've worn a lot by miss circle i think my new year's eve outfit was by miss circle i'll flash a picture here 
um, that was last New Year's Eve. And I thought it was very comfortable. I think their pieces are well made um, for the most part. And I, yeah, I, I would recommend you checking out the site, at least scoping it out if you're looking for some new holiday party outfits and you want to splurge or invest in one. Okay, the shoe, because there's nothing else that we have here. The shoe is by Nina. I love Nina as a shoe brand. I think of Nina as like the bat mitzvah shoe brand because I used to go to bat mitzvahs in middle school and I would wear Nina's little kitten heel shoe. Like they've been around for that long and I have a good relationship with the brand and I am sorry, but their shoes are so comfortable. Like everyone... And I'm not going to say that like these brands that I'm about to name are not comfortable, but I know a lot of people say like, oh, Stuart Weitzman is like the most comfortable sandal. And like, I do have Stuart Weitzman sandals and I think that they're comfortable. Um, some people say like Nine West is very comfortable too. I know people say like sometimes they don't think Aldo is that comfortable when it comes to just like a standard heel. Whatever the case, I happen to feel most comfortable in Nina. And I don't know if your feet are like me. I have very wide, ugly runner's feet. So if you have wide, ugly runner's feet, I would suggest checking out Nina. And even if you don't have wide, ugly runner's feet, I think they'll still be comfortable for you. And I don't think they'll let you down. So anyway, I am wearing this platform today. And it's tall, mostly well for two reasons. One, because Nina made it that way. And two, because this jumpsuit is very long on me. And I needed the height to make sure that my pants weren't skimming the floor. So a poor girl's tip for when you need to get something tailored is invest in higher heels. Then you don't even have to worry about getting it tailored and paying the extra money to get it tailored, you know? Um, or you could save the money and on the heels and get the jumpsuit tailored, but why stick with one thing when you could have two, right? So I say get the platform and I like the crystals, these black crystals, especially. I'm not really a silver crystal girl and that's why I think these platforms are so awesome. Um, I, I like the sculptural heel. I think it's really special. I don't know. I'm a very big fan of any Nina shoe and this one just happens to take the cake for me. I'm going to get rid of it so that we can quickly um, and efficiently jump into our hot cocoa tasting because um, I think we're going to do the hot cocoa tasting ASAP. That way I can use the hot cocoa to get me through talking about holiday outfits, holiday joy, all of that. I will say that I go to Charleston to celebrate the holidays with my family. Um, normally, that means that I am sitting there cooking my bacon, baking my pull apart bread and my pecan pie all day in sweatpants. I usually don't change out of sweatpants. So I normally don't dress up in like a holiday festive look. Sorry, I need to do this. I know they say don't shit where you eat, but this isn't shitting. This is stomping. This is stomping where I eat. Um, yeah, I do eat at this table, by the way. But anyway, so I do go to Charleston to spend time with my family and I don't really normally dress up for that occasion. So on Christmas, I'm wearing like sweats and eating a lot of food and just like lounging, um, and probably taking a weed gummy and just like laughing with my family. But when I do go to a party in like New York or a fashion event, I tend to like to dress up. I like the whole festive vibe thing. I mean, we talked about it in the Thanksgiving episode. You know that I love anything that involves dressing up. So why not? Um, and I am inspired by those around me to dress up. I think that's like my favorite part of it all is to see how people interpret like festive holiday dressing because it's really different for everyone. And that's why when it comes to my advice for what to wear for holiday parties and holiday season, I'm going to give you a range because I know that not everyone has the same sense of style. Some people prefer to dress more androgynously. Some people prefer to dress with frills and feathers like this. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. So it really could depend on the day, not just your general aesthetic, right? Um, I'm going to show you some celebrity outfits and just like street style looks alike. But I will say, oh, Trish just... Came Trish, come participate. Come participate. Come on. Come on. Come on. She's coming, everyone. She's coming. She'll be right there. She just has to um, 
rub her neck against the side of the couch, which means ownership. I don't know if you can see her. I can't. I thought, so I recently got LASIK surgery and I thought that like my eyes would be able to see myself filming because we did get a new camera. We got a new camera on Black Friday and I thought that I'd be able to see like myself better, but I can't really see over there. So I don't know. I mean, I see her tail in the mirror over there, but who knows? Trish, come on up. She's also, Trish is very stubborn with me. I'm like a little embarrassed right now. I'm a little flush because she normally will like listen to me, but when she knows it's important that she listens, she doesn't listen to me. So it's like, I know that she's just trying to get her way right now, but she'll be up. She's a cat. So anyway, in order to get inspired by what other people are wearing this holiday season and for us to start talking about those looks that I really love, we're first gonna talk to the guys and we're gonna ask them what they're wearing. Okay, so here's the story with the guys. I wanna kinda like start off with the guys. I'm trying to think what's the oldest guy I think it's it's probably the Christmas tree. So, okay. So, here's the story with the guys. The guys, first of all, they're called guys because when I was little, I had those little, like, rubber plastic, like, figurines. I would get them, you know, anywhere from, like, the Burger King Happy Meal bag to, like, I guess I would go to, like, uh, Toys R Us and get them. And I had, like, all my favorite characters, like, my favorite Disney characters and... Oh, and Kit's a fan of the guys, you'll see. I had, you know, I had like all these guys, right? And I would line them up in like a parade. And that was like one of my activities. It was like playing with Barbies, playing with guys. And I would line them up in, in a parade and I would like, I think that's it. Like, I don't know how much further it went. I remember I used to form like a lot of relationships in my head with the different guys and the different Barbies and everything. But like when it came to the guys, I think they kind of stood still and had their relationships. I don't think they like, you know, oh, there she is. <laughs> Just when I forgot about her, you know. Um, hi, Bubs. Hi. So I, I'm pretty sure that they had these relationships like in my head and they just kind of like stayed in their line. I think I was very specific about the fact that I wanted them to be in a specific order. It was a parade. So anyway, because I called them my guys, my dad started to call these Christmas like figures, these Christmas furry friends that do, um, they do speak or sing. Um, he started to call them the guys. So he was asking me the other day, he's like, where is, like, I want my boyfriend to get a Christmas tree. He's like, did you take out the guys yet? And I was like, I'm going to take out the guys, I promise. And then I was like, wait a second, the guys need to be a part of Dinner for Shoes. And so you know, what we like to do as a family is put them all on at the same time and let them all sing their songs. So I'm going to try to do that and then we'll interview them about what they're wearing. However, I don't know when the last time was that all of these batteries were replaced. So I'm assuming that not one of them will make a peep. But I think what we should do is whichever one does make a peep, that is the one who gets $436 million like on Squid Games. Okay, so I'm, I recently started to get obsessed with Squid Games, but I'm only on episode five. So I don't even know if that's the right number of money, but whatever, I'm obsessed with it. And I, it's my like holiday show this year. Okay, so because he's first, we'll put him on the plate. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Go, go. Yoga Santa is not. The ones that have little G's don't go. All right, only some of them. Oh, yoga's going, yoga's going. Oh, this one's so good with the cat in the butt. There he goes. Okay, it was, wow. So I think it's safe to say. I don't know if Alvin's gonna shut up. 
personally. <laughs> Don't know. Okay, he shut up. So Alvin did win, but I will say that I'm shocked because this Christmas tree is the oldest and he was going for the longest and just like, I don't know, I have major respect for the old Christmas tree. And this one reminds me the most of my dad and he was like obsessed with these and he's the one who distributed them evenly between all the family members. So like, I just feel like he's, he wins. But I will say that like, okay, so we'll put these three out here because I do really like, I want to show the cat one just on its own. It's so obnoxious. All right, it's not funny. I like that you can shut them off. Um, but anyway, so those are the guys. I, I was admiring their outfits just to figure out like which I was going to talk about and which I was going to really like interview for their outfits. I, I actually think that Alvin's my favorite. I like that he has a little hoodie on and it just says an A for Alvin. Like if I could have one, if I could wear one item for the rest of my life, it would honestly probably be a hoodie that had an S on it. Um, so I do appreciate that. I like that Santa, Yoga Santa, is wearing these like nylon leggings and they do look like they have that like athletic sheen that we're used to seeing. So I do admire that. Um, and I, I guess I like this reindeer scarf. It's kind of like an Argyle Christmas print situation. I don't know if you saw, but this little dog, he has like a mustache and it says, I must ask you a question. Will you be home, home for Christmas? And I will be home for Christmas. Um, so there's that. And then the Christmas tree is just wearing his standard leaves. And I just, he's so plush. I love him. I really do. I think he is my favorite. Okay. So that's, that's the guys. And we could spend longer talking about what they're all wearing, but I think we're going to head into my advice and we're definitely going to head into this hot cocoa. So let's get set up with the hot cocoa and I'll be right back. We're back. I'm so excited to try this hot cocoa. Okay, let me show you how I'm all how I'm gonna do this. So I have a hot chocolate, hot, I keep saying hot cocoa, but it's hot chocolate, no whip from Starbucks. This one I will say was the messiest when I was driving home, even though I had one of those trays, it still got all over. I know it's my fault. I didn't get the little stir thing, but whatever. Okay, I'm going to carefully pour this hot chocolate into the cup that is marked. The cup that is marked with an S for Starbucks, okay? They're all the same cup. They have no weird markings, okay? I'm also gonna try, I know what you're thinking and like maybe they all have different colors, but I'm gonna try not to notice that and I think I'll forget anyway. Um, and I'm gonna definitely be honest. Okay, we have a small original hot chocolate from Dunkin'. Why is it original? I don't know. Um, Dunkin', oh, they're the exact same color. It's like crazy how similar they are. I'm actually going to take a picture just to prove it to you. Okay, there's Duncan. Now, I haven't tried any of these yet, so that's another important note because obviously if I had taken a sip when I was bringing them over, that's kind of cheating, right? And now this is Hidden Grounds. This little baby was the one that cost $4.80. Oh, okay, this one looks different, but I'm hoping when I pour it, it won't... Okay, it looks very, very, very different. Fuck. Um, all right, what we're gonna do is close my eyes. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. Okay, to get around that. And I'm gonna show you how these all look different. All right, now this picture is gonna flash. It's so meta, because this picture is gonna flash right here and I'm taking it right now. Okay, so these are all, oh my God, I don't even know if I poured them in. Oh, thank God I did. Okay, this is H for Hidden Grounds, right? And this is the one that looks different. This was my first. So this is Starbucks. And this one is the D for Duncan. Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to put these on the plate and mix them up. And I'm not going to look. Now, me playing with glass like this is honestly very, very, very dangerous. Maybe instead I won't do this on the glass and I'll do this. There has to be a better way to be doing this, right? I'm already confused. I already don't know which one is which. I will just say that. Just from taking them off the glass plate, putting it onto the table, I actually have no idea. Um, and my eyes are still shut, FYI. I don't know how to prove that to you except for to, to tell you to think about whether or not I actually want to play this game honestly. And I think if you know me, you know that I do want to play this game honestly because it's fucking fun. All right. Here's the first one. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. First one I'm going to put right up here. Interesting. That one tasted a little watery to me. I'm not going to lie. Here's the second one. Okay, this one's thicker, but it's still got this like watery back taste. I'm going to put two over here. So we'll go like in a, we'll go clockwise. Does that count? All right. I don't know why, but I feel like this one's going to be the best. And I don't, I don't know why. Oh my God, that was the worst. <laughs> okay. All right. This is easy. I thought this was going to be difficult, but this is very easy. So the one closest to me is hands down the best. This would be the second favorite. This one is extremely watery. Um, I don't, I don't want that one ever again. Like these two, I would order again if I was in the mood for hot chocolate. This one, I would not. I'm going to open my eyes and we're going to make the reveal. Oh, okay. Cause I already, already see this one's lighter. So that's the hidden grounds one. So my second choice was hidden grounds. And normally I like the most expensive thing, the best. This is the one that costs 480. No, <laughs> I didn't. I like this one that now. Why do I feel like it's going to be Starbucks? I'm such a Starbucks girl. I like am basic, even though I try not to be basic. Actually, I don't try not to be basic. I just am who I am. And I think a lot of signs point to basic. Don't get. Whoa. Okay. My mind is fucking blown. I hate Duncan. I hate Duncan coffee. I would go to Hidden Grounds and Starbucks a million times over. I. Are, are we sure I did this right? This is Starbucks. The worst. Let me just make sure that's accurate. Because I still, I left a little bit in the cup. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, wait. The Duncan. Let me just make sure. I left a little bit in each cup just in case I need to verify. Yeah. So the Duncan's one, the Duncan one tastes the most like melted chocolate. If I had to guess, the other ones taste, this one does taste like it could have like the Hidden Grounds one. Mm. This one I do like. It's a lighter taste, but it's almost like it's an intentionally lighter taste. I won't say I don't like this one. I won't. I do like that. And I think that that would be like a good, a good option for a day where you want like a lighter hot chocolate that's a little milkier and maybe even like bubblier and foamier. But this one, Duncan. That takes the cake. It almost tastes like there's melted marshmallows in there. It's creamier. Starbucks, forget it. Oh my God, Starbucks. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, they, they, didn't, they, they didn't quit their day job. They know they're good for coffee and they keep it to coffee. And that's, that's what they should do. They should take the hot chocolate off the menu. Maybe if I had gotten the white hot chocolate, I would feel differently. But I don't know, man. Like, that is not good. So we're going to continue sipping these two. And I'm going to get into um, holiday outfits. Because I know you're all dying to know what I think you should wear for the holidays. <laughs> all 110, 210 of you. I think we have 210 followers now on Instagram. I'm so excited. And now we have all that, these guys as followers too, right? We do. We do. They're going to follow us. Follow. Like for like. <laughs> follow for follow. Right? <laughs> FYP for you, Paige. Okay. So let me get, let me pull up my, um, my, my outfits. Okay. Now here's what I'm going to say. If you have multiple holiday parties to go to on the, on the calendar, maybe you have one for work. Maybe you have a friend's holiday bash or whatever it is. Maybe you have something fancy. And this, we're probably going to do a whole separate episode on New Year's Eve outfits, but this also goes for New Year's Eve. This is kind of like a rule. My thoughts are you look at the weather first. You look if it's going to be frigid or you decide or, or maybe it's going to be warm. And then you're like, OK, I could have I could wear a dress if it's going to be warmer. Like I don't mind maybe showing my legs a little or maybe showing my, a bare like my bare skin a little. I won't be freezing even if it's indoors. Like I could wear something like this jumpsuit because I don't want to be so covered up. I don't want to be in a turtleneck. Right. So you look at the weather and then you determine, do I want to wear pants? Do I want to wear a skirt? Do I want to wear a dress? Do I want to wear tights? Do I want to wear heels? Do I want to wear flats? Those very simple questions. Those are like about five questions that I think you have to ask yourself. And I divided up my favorite outfits, first looking at dresses, then we're going to go into skirts, and then we're going to go into pants. I actually didn't pick a favorite, but I'm going to pick it as I'm talking about it. I actually am already having an idea what my favorite is. But okay, let's start with Justine Sky. 
She is wearing this. Now, she makes great use of a turtleneck. I think it's turtleneck season. Like, why not fully lean into that? I like that her turtleneck dress is body conscious. It's also, it's got that sheen which really speaks to the holidays. And it's this like really pretty shade also. She kind of plays up the sheen by putting a necklace around her turtleneck. And I think that that's very unexpected right now. And I'll tell you why. Right now, it, we're kind of having a no necklace moment. I don't know if, you've know if you know that, but it's kind of like the trend to not wear a necklace. But during the holidays when like you want to be festive and all that, you kind of want to wear a necklace. Like you want to add a little bit more like flair, right? So I like that she went for it and she's matching the earrings with it. You can wear tights with this outfit or you don't have to. I think when you're wearing a turtleneck neck and you're wearing cool jewelry, pull your hair back. That's just my advice. I think it looks cool. It's a great way to show off the details of your silhouette. All right, now let's talk about Emma Myers in this Redarte dress. Obviously, I would love to have this Redarte dress, but it's probably $3,400, if not more. So I can't, but I love how romantic this is. I think if you want to try out the gloves, which I actually ordered a pair of gloves, and I'm so excited to try them. They're like long elbow length gloves. We'll definitely, we'll do something with them um, down the line. But if you want to try off like a delicate little glove that maybe is a little bit more simple, I say go with like a sheer mesh glove like this. You can probably find them on Amazon. Um, and I think it's cool how she kind of like accents the lace that's on her, her silk dress with the gloves. I think that's really cool. It kind of like mirrors the same sort of like see-through fabric. I love bows. I just think it's undeniably festive. I just ordered these like mules from Zara that have, I'll link them. They have bows on them. They're perfect for the holidays. Love that. Okay, if you want to be really daring, but you still want to keep the bow situation going on, look for a sheer dress. I don't hate the idea of animal print during the holidays. I think Ashley Graham does it best here. She's wearing this Harris Reed Fernina Ricci dress. It's a maxi dress. You can see her underwear through it. Her hair is down in waves. It's glamorous. It's parted at the center. She's got her earring situation going on. I think that's gorgeous. And that is, you know... Rocking the naked dress trend is an option during the holidays. I think we can't forget that. And if you wear like a long blazer or a long wool coat over this look, you can go wherever you want to go. Even if it's snowing, you'll feel covered up, you know? So just, just try it. Okay, here's another option. I, I don't want to pronounce this brand, but this is Clara McGregor wearing Adnafique. 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 I think doing a monochrome moment in all red or all green or all like royal blue, like a jewel tone, maybe purple during the holidays is really cool. Invest in a dress that maybe it's a corset dress. Maybe it's just like a plain, simple little sheath dress, but a mini dress that is the same color as a blazer you already own or vice versa. Invest in a blazer that's the same color as a dress you already own. Do this monochrome moment during the holidays. I think it's a great way to get noticed. It's glamorous. It's sexy. Okay. Next up, I think we have my favorite. I thought about this look immediately when I was thinking like, who's my favorite? Okay, so this is Maida wearing a mono strapless dress and it's got a slit, a very high slit. And she's wearing tights, which I'm really into the tights moment right now with this point. She's wearing pointed toe Louboutins. You don't need to wear Louboutins. You should if you have them. I would if I had them, but you should wear tights with heels like this. I think it looks sick. I think if you're, if you were afraid to wear like a very high slip before, try it with tights, try it with tights. And you can get tights for very, very cheap on Amazon that look just like this. And I love how she kept the jewelry minimalist. See, she's not wearing a necklace. It's sexy. I'm telling you, that's the trend right now. She leaves her hair down. It's voluminous on top, but kind of sleek and sophisticated on the bottom. I love that. Another example for if you do like my vibe, I would say this outfit is the most like my vibe that I'm going for today. This sleeper dress I think is really, really cool. It's silk and it's got the feathers across the top. It looks easy to wear. It looks comfortable. It looks almost like pajamas, to be honest. You can wear that with like a dainty little heel. You can go for a booty. You can go for something with an embellishment. I think this is just really great holiday dress. So, and it's called the Bohemian slip dress. Bohem, Bohem. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, this next look is 
for like the 80s lover out there. Isabel Morant shows it. It's got, it's a mini dress with exaggerated shoulders. It's still a turtleneck dress. It's got sequins or beads going on and an asymmetrical hemline, a little like slit at the front. I think it's cool to wear a black dress with a pair of white knee high boots, accent those boots with a bag. Such a cool look. Love the chandelier earrings. Love the sunglasses. Wear sunglasses inside. Why not? Trish? So Trish makes this very guttural sound when she's playing with her baby, which is essentially just a little ball. And I think that's happening right now. Trish, do you want to come in here? Because you seem to be having an emotional moment. Oh. Oh. Okay. She's laying down. She's laying down. She's enjoying herself over there. So let's move on to this velvet, this red velvet Ghani dress. I think it's cool to try mixing textures. I love the idea of mixing like a long sleeve red velvet dress with a black patent leather boot. Could be a booty, can be knee high. I think if your dress has a slit, it is cool to try a knee high. You show more of the boot as you're walking. Um, but red velvet, that's classic for the holidays. All right, so those are some of my dress options. You've got mini, you've got maxi, you've got something in between, like a midi. And now we're gonna move on to skirts. I saw this Salem Mitchell outfit the other day, and it also reminds me of the outfit I'm wearing right now because what do you know, feathers. I think I'm feeling feathers this holiday season. I think I'm really feeling feathers because I'm like, like leaning into the feathers. But so Salem Mitchell wears this like cool little pleated, almost schoolgirl skirt that it feels like she brought over from fall into winter with her black, off the shoulder, feather trim top and red heels. And like, I just think that like subtle Christmas color vibe is very cool. Um, I like that she, her hair is back so you can see the hoops. And I think she made the perfect choice by going for like a neutral bag. Now, if you want to try like a sequin or shiny metallic skirt, I have a few options. Um, the first one I will say that I love is this Christopher Esber look. This is kind of like a low rise, flashy metallic skirt. But then there's like a belly shirt turtleneck, like a cool cropped turtleneck. I think that's a really cool idea for the holidays. Um, it also strikes me as a little 80s. I think you could do like a cool mule with it. Um, you could just do a cool sandal. You can probably even wear a pencil skirt with tights and like a black sandal and make this look cool. I think this is awesome. Like I kind of want to try this outfit. This is probably like my second favorite outfit for the holidays. Um, and then I, my, my friend Chelsea and her sister Chris, they are, they are awesome. Follow them if you don't. They have great outfit inspiration all the time, but they comprise NYC clothes. And I love how they went for the little sheen skirts here. Um, Chelsea's wearing one with rhinestones and like she's got that black sweater moment going on. It really speaks to like like the whole Christopher Esber vibe I just showed. And then Chris has just like this cool, she is like mixing textures. And I think that's another really neat idea. Let's say you have like a sequin skirt and you have kind of like a metallic thread turtleneck or sweater. Believe it or not, like those are gonna look good together even if they're slightly different shades. This is like a go all out for the holiday moment. And they're wearing J. Crew, So another great place to look. Um, in a similar vein, I like how this look, this might be like a cool look for uh, a holiday party at work, but Zaya Wade is wearing this really cool Miu Miu skirt and then just like a sweater that kind of drapes over it. Her jacket is balanced on her shoulders, which I think is just a chic move. It's cool to show up to the holiday party that way. And I really like the contrast of like a white or bone colored shoe with a black tight. I think that's a neat idea. Um, we're going to move on now to jackets, actually. I forgot that I was going to do the jacket category because I do have a few that I think are really cool ideas. Probably the most unexpected idea of the season for you is this Taraji P. Henson look. She's wearing an acne trench and the way she tied it is almost like she turned her jacket into a dress. So I'm not saying it has to be a trench coat, but if you have a jacket that could be a dress and maybe you could even like belt it and then kind of like wear it off the shoulders a little so maybe you don't button it all the way up with tights and like a knee high boot, I think that's sexy and cool. So if you don't want to invest in something new for the holidays and you want to look in your closet, don't knock the coat section of your closet. One of those coats could literally become a dress and you should remember this outfit as inspiration. 
Now, the other day, Jennifer Lawrence went to a Dior event and um, she actually, she's very funny. And whenever she's wearing Dior, she does very funny things. And she um, actually, there was this this cool blazer jacket. It was long and it was belted. And she like kind of moved very quickly and the belt popped off. But, you know, so what if that happens? That probably happens to me every day. But I just think that a really cool blazer uh, jacket over a white button down is a great idea. And what you can do is kind of like roll the sleeves of the button down to accent the, the look and kind of give it contrast. I also like how Rosie from Blackpink did this. She's wearing an exaggerated shoulder blazer coat and also going for the sheer tights with like a cool black strappy sandal. Um, love her oversized hoops as well. But her contrast is coming from like a nice white, undershirt essentially um vice versa uh there's this look that the frankie shop instagrammed there's this pearl bag if you have a cool like pearl bag and you want to accent like a white blazer i think that's another really cool holiday move i like how this is just a plain black maxi dress literally could be like a beach dress no one will even know throw it on put on your blazer on top and just grab a cool bag like you'd be surprised how far a cool bag like that goes. Again, sure you could get a pearl bag on Amazon. Okay, pants. Dua Lipa really killed it in this outfit. She is wearing Amina Muadi shoes, which is where I saw this look. And I love the red like patent leather pant with just a simple white tank, but the white tank has like rhinestones in it, which is just really cool to me. So that's an option to wear it underneath a jacket, your go-to jacket, doesn't even matter which one it is. And then finally, Tan France wearing this Perte Diego, I think that's how you pronounce it, top. Very ornamental, um, very cool if you have a top like this. If you have a statement top like this, let's say it's like your go-to holiday top and you love it, wear it with a simple black trouser and a loafer, you will not regret that. And I like personally that he does put like the turtleneck, he like lets it peek out totally up to you you can kind of go bare here you could like wear a statement earring um again with a top like this that's super like decorated I don't recommend a necklace but hey I'm just thinner for shoes and you're you you do you anyway um I am going to finish my hot cocoa and I'm going to probably get naked because at the end of the day I think everyone agrees Unless you're wearing pajamas, like maybe that sleeper dress, when you go to a party, you always just want to go home and take your bra off. I'm not even wearing a bra, but I'll take off everything else. Um, on that note, happy holiday season. We may do another holiday episode, so I can't say I won't be festive again. I'm sure the guys will still be here for the next episode, so don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Um, like, subscribe, tell all your friends about Dinner for Shoes. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for tuning in.